Language on the rise, an epidemic that affects us all. Language is a system of communication via speech, which is a collection of sounds that a group of people understand to have the same meaning. Most, most languages have literary traditions, which is a fancy way for saying alphabet. There are 6,909 languages around the world, which, but a majority of them are spoken by less than a million people. Let's cut out to Tara in the field for some investigation. I'm glad to be out here digging for the truth behind the language epidemic. The categorizing of languages can be illustrated by a tree. The trunk of the tree represents a language family, which is a collection of languages related through a common ancestral language that existed long before recorded history. The branches logically follow, representing the different language branches within a family. A collection of leaves on the branches symbolizes a group of languages, which all sound similar enough so that the, re so that the, the speakers of the language can understand each one. Finally, the leaves themselves exemplify individual languages. In general, from largest to smallest, the categories go from families to branches to groups, then finally languages. Back to Sky to explore these different families. Thanks, Tara, for that good investigation. <laughs> Breaking news, this just in. The language epidemic is spreading internationally. With a report of 13 families, currently everyone in the world is affected. Scientists have identified these families and where the affected areas are. Indo-European in the Americas and Europe, Sino-Tibetan in China, Austronesian, Austro-Asiatic, Thai Kadai, Japanese and Korean in East and South Asia, Afro-Asiatic, Altic and Uralistic in Southwest Asia, North Africa and Central Asia. And finally in Niger, Congo, Nilo, Saharan, and Kyosha in Africa. Woo, that was a mouthful to say. This has been a report on the global outbreak of language. Key issue two! Hi, my name is English. I'm from the British Isles and I was born in the 1400s, and my parents are French and German. I was created when the French upper class and the lower German class blended together. Here is some family history. My German origins came from the Angles, Jutes, and Saxons who invaded the British Isles and pushed the native Celtics north into Scotland. I'm also related to the Norse Vikings who made slight contributions. Next, my French predecessors arrived in the British Isles in 1066. The nobles quickly adopted French as the official language, but the rest of the population, who had little education, still spoke in German. Eventually, the two languages combined to form present-day me. Simple words, such as sky, horse, man, and women, are all from Germanic. And the more elegant words, such as celestial, equestrian, masculine, and feminine, all come from French. Soon, I saved up enough money for a trip to North America where I quickly became super popular with everyone and decided to stick around. With enough time, I created my super famous YouTube channel and started to gain traction all around the world, especially in Ireland, South Asia, South Pacific, and Africa thanks to my British agent. After a while, I got older and decided to settle down and relax more or less with spreading out around the world. Nevertheless, I'm still growing and changing every day with the invention of new ideas and technology. Now my relatives are going to talk about their lives. Even though I can be difficult to understand, it's obvious English and I are related. I have split personality sometimes, being either West or North Germanic, and split further into high or low. English isn't an only child. 
While living in Western Europe, I had three children, which are English, Dutch, and Flemish. At one point in my life, I lived in Northern Europe, too. During my travels, I had five more children, which were Danish, Icelandic, Norwegian, Swedish, and Faroes. Now, my lovely partner, who is very romantic. As my partner said, I can be romantic. I get this from my Latin ancestors. My relatives are Spanish, Portuguese, Romanian, and Italian. We are all similar enough so that we can understand each other, but we have our unique characteristics due to separation by different land features, like mountains, rivers, or just long distances. My parent, Latin, was from southern Italy and was the principal language for the Roman Empire. The Romans went on for a conquest for vast amounts of land and eventually achieved that dream, but sadly collapsed after it couldn't support its own size. After the collapse, former provinces lost communication, resulting in wider variation of Latin and creating new languages. I am the most popular of the Indo-European branches, with a total of more than 1 billion speakers. Like my other family members, I have split personalities. I am split between East and West. My Eastern self is called Indic. Indic is popular in India, which contributes 1 billion speakers. Only one language in India is official, that being Hindi. But Hindi is more or less considered a collection of languages rather than one. My Western self is called Iranian, popular in Iran and neighboring countries. The major groups include Persian, Pashto, and Kurdish. Hello, I am Balto Slavic, and I also have split personalities. My Eastern personality is more popular, especially Russian, which is spoken by more than 80% of Russian people. Russian became more relevant in 1945 after the rise of the Soviet Union. However, they want to use other languages other than Russian was a major aspect that contributed to its breakup. Ukrainian and Belarusian are the other common East Slavic languages. My other personality is West Slavic, with the most spoken languages being Polish, Czechs, and Slovak. The government of Czechoslovakia tried balancing the use in Czechs and Slovak, even switching between the two languages during televised sports. National unity was achieved, but in 1993, Slovakia split from the Czech Republic. My last personality is South Slavic, with the most widely, widely used languages being the one spoken in Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, Montenegro, and Serbia. Although linguists continue to consider it one language, the name Bosnians, Croatian, and Serbian are used to show that each language is unique. Differences were introduced in the South Slavic languages, like Muslims adding Arabic words. Although differences among Slavic languages are small, they are preserved and accentuated. Whew, that was intense. As you can see, I have a really complex and diverse family. Nowadays, there is a lot that is known about the Indo-European family, but not much is known about how we originated. Linguists mostly accept the fact of our common ancestor, Proto-Indo-European, but they cannot distinguish when and where the language originated and the means by which it diffused. There are two stories that I was told throughout my life. One is that Indo-European language came around from farmers who needed a common way to share thoughts and ideas for new farming methods. Another is a tale of conquest and how the Indo-European family was spread through warriors gaining control over the land and spreading the language they spoke to any natives. Overall, not much is known about the origin, but we won't really know since it was such a long time ago. No matter the origin or diffusion, communication was poor and isolation resulted in increasingly distinct languages. Key issue three! Before we start, some backstory. First... A dialect is a regional variation of a language. This is characterized by distinctive vocabulary, spelling, and pronunciation. Dialects are separated by something called an isoglass, which is a word use boundary. With that out of the way, we have a main character named Ridley, who is an inspiring linguist and is going on a quest to learn the most he can about dialects. I can't keep walking. It's been days and I haven't stopped searching for that ancient tune. I'm starting to question if that weird guy I sold my cow to actually knew what he was talking about. Who are you? My name's Frank Downsman. I was just like you in my youth, searching for answers that I never could find. But do not give up. What you seek is just beyond the hills. You shall meet new characters along your way who will give you bits of information that will aid you on your quest. Good luck. 
and always prevail. What's going on here? This place is weird, but I need to finish my quest. My language thesis, it's due in a week, and I still haven't come across anything. Wait, a hill! He said I must go beyond and seek the hills. I must go there. Hey, I heard you knew something about dialects. Yeah, what's it to you? Well, I need to know whatever it is you're gonna tell me. I'm on this quest and I really need your help, and this guy appeared and told me to be, that you'd help me. Listen, fella. My name's George, and you seem like a nice guy. I'm gonna help you out. So basically, that flashy character is one of the guys of the language, and he was trying to help you on your quest. I'm one of his disciples, which is a fancy word for friend. And I'm supposed to be helping you out. So, what are you supposed to tell me? So, dialects are kind of funny in the sense that it all depends on what region you're from. A perfect example is the United States. There are three different dialects all in one half of the country kind of crazy. In the north, you have the northern dialects, which came up because two-thirds of the settlers were from New England, or from New England, were Puritans, and came from southeastern England, and depending on where you were, they sound very, very different. The next are the southeasterners. Most often came from southeastern England, and mainly were prisoners, were servants, or refugees. That's where I come from, by the way. Then you got the Midlanders, who are a very diverse set of immigrants. They were, the Midlanders were mainly Quakers, Scots, Irishmen in, in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And then you got the Germans, the Dutch, and the Swedes who settled and learned their English from other English speakers in the area. <clears throat> what are you doing? Uh, my pencil broke and I didn't have time to sharpen it so I started recording you so I could play back what you said later. Okay, uh, I never had that happen. Anyways, that's about it. The only, the only other thing that's left to say is the different dialects from other languages, but that's not my forte, so you're gonna have to travel to the west in order to find another language guy. His name's Joe, by the way, and I'd probably help you find him. Alright, that's weird. I guess he left before I could finish what I was saying. Anyway, back to cloud watching. Joe! I'd rather you not call me that. I hate the name Joe. My name's Joseph. What do you want? Uh, I heard you knew something about foreign dialects, specifically in England. I do, in fact, know some. What you want to do? I, I, I... Alright, so Joe told me to, stay, to say something like this to summon Frank. <clears throat> I summon thee, Frank Johnson, god of dialects, and bestower of final knowledge. Alright, now we wait. Yo, what's up? Joe told me that you could bestow the final knowledge about our foreign di or about foreign dialects, and I've been running around for like three days, and I'm starting to get tired of it. So we can at least get so if we can get the ball rolling, that'd be really cool. I never knew someone in the presence of a god would be so uninterested. In any case, I guess we could start. <coughs> so I'm gonna cut to the chase and not drag this along. Portuguese came about when an old version of it called Castilian was cut off from the main hub of its speaking and was left in an isolated area called Portugal nowadays. <clears throat> Portuguese lay up spread around the world due to colonization and is now a very popular language. Something very similar happened in Italy where there was seven different dialects but they started to pick up a few million speakers and are now considered different languages even though they are similar to Italian. Going back to Portugal and the colonization, we're going to colonize this language and the language of the native people being colonized mix. It's called a Creole. And this happened in countries like Haiti, who speak a mixture of French and the native Haitian language. A mixture of Spanish and Caribbean in the West Indies. And the list goes on and on. Really, that's about it. Any questions? Am I done with my quest? Do I have to visit any other people? Am I finally done? No, nope, you're done. You know as much about dialects as I know now, and it's time for me to go. See you on the flip side. Well, I guess it's time for me to go home. Sweet, my thesis about language is finally graded. I can't wait to see the res results of a B? What the issue? Four! Oh, hey there. I was just catching up on my reading about... Oh, what you doing there, Jack? Oh, well, I was uh, just telling these lovely people about why people preserve languages. Oh, uh, that kind of reminds me of uh, Belgium. Pardon? Well, the multilingual state Belgium 
has the northern section known as the Flemings and the southern section known as the Walloons. Ah, uh, yes, the Walloons and the Flemings that speak French and the Flemings that speak Flemish, which would be a dialect of Dutch. Precisely. The two have separated the region of Belgium into Wallonia and Flanders. And if I'm correct, Flanders wants to separate from Wallonia. Yes, and if Flanders separates from Wallonia and they become two different regions, regions, I mean states, sorry, but uh, Wallonia would be one of the poorest countries, while Flanders one of the richest. Well, that's a pretty good example of languages coexisting with each other, like a multilingual state. Uh, but what about isolated and extinct languages? Hmm. Uh, can you really explain that? I do not know. An isolated language is a language unrelated to any other and therefore cannot be put into a family. An example of which would be Basque, which was around before the Indo-European era. Where are they located? Like, in the Pyrenees Mountains of France and Spain. Their, their isolation geographically have preserved it. And what I mean by that is essentially they're isolated from other languages. Hmm, yes. Yeah, According to this book, extinct languages are languages that are no longer used. Hmm, kind of a given, but yes. Alright, well, don't need to be a jerk about it. Anyways, one example could be Gothic, which used to be widely spoken in Eastern and Northern Europe, kind of in a Russia area. I should also point out that the entire group that Gothic is in, East Germanic, is also extinct. How did it go extinct, may I ask? Well, most of the Goths were uh, com converted through an integration of power and cultural beliefs. Kind of, like, they were all converted into Christianity, essentially. Well, it typically doesn't happen, but it can happen, and an example of this would be Hebrew. So, the language Hebrew was ex became extinct in the 4th century, but in 1948, when the country of Israel was founded, uh, they brought it back as their official language. That's, that's all! da 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 da, -da. No. Jack, have you ever heard of Oxtan? And how it's being preserved. Uh, yes, but I'm sure that these lovely people do not know that. So essentially, people near southern France, approximately 2 million people or so, speak Occitan. Yes, and uh, Francien became the standard language in France. Numerous dialects are spoken of this language. Uh, in order to have Occitan preserved with friends and speakers, the government has made bilingual schools that teach both Occitan and Francien. Indeed. And with that being said, while this is a good thing, the Occitan speakers want to see more efforts. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> oh, low battery. Well, I'm assuming you're completing your journey on becoming the excellent linguist that you are. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the English language and lingua franca. Let's start with lingua franca. So, this is basically a language used to facilitate trade. And to segue, an example of that would be English, which many countries learn because it is such an important lingua franca. So, and uh, it's taught in many colleges, many high schools, because of uh, what I said earlier. It's a major trade language. I suppose I should also mention the expansion diffusion of English. This is, English has expanded throughout the US as well as many other countries. For example, Appalachian English pronounces words such as creek with grick. Or uh, as this book shows me, hollow as holler. And uh, even in other countries. So there's Franglish, which is a mix of French and English, and Danglish, which is a mix of German and English, and uh, Spanglish, which is Spanish and English.